All right, so more about high-end thermal pastes. So uh, recently, like uh, within the last one year or so, Thermalright released some uh, new uh, high-end thermal pastes to the market. And the uh, new uh, conventional thermal pastes really uh, caught my eye because of their very high stated thermal conductivity rating on the uh, packaging. So uh, there are quite a few of those new thermal pastes. So uh, Thermalright TF6, TF8, and the uh, highest one that they released is the Thermalright TFX, and that is the one that I decided to order just for uh, just for testing purposes out of pure interest. So uh, personally, I don't really uh, think that the thermal conductivity rating really uh, tells the truth uh, about the product uh, that well. So uh, if we just remember, like uh, my uh, high-end thermal my high-end thermal paste comparison video, there the overall differences were so close to each other that it was almost impossible to pick out a clear winner. And even when just compared, when I compared the uh, KPX thermal paste to the uh, Alpha Cool OEM kind of stock thermal paste, even there the difference was only like five to six degrees between the two. So uh, you can't really judge the winner out of the whole. Uh, uh, or, I mean, out of the uh, comparison, just by based on some uh, paper value. So uh, we have to test all the pastes ourselves, and then we can see what is actually good or not. But anyways, so uh, if we just look at the back side of the packaging of this uh, thermal right TFX, we can quite quickly note that they uh, state that the thermal conductivity rating of the TFX is 14.3 watts per meter Kelvin. And if you look carefully, you can also note quickly that they promise usable temperature range down from minus 250 degrees Celsius all the way up to plus 300 degrees Celsius. So uh, at least uh, in theory, this thermal paste should be a very good option both, for, I mean, for air, water, and even for uh, sub-zero cooling. So uh, we have to, we will see that out soon. So I, I didn't buff it buying all the uh, different thermal pastes that they are releasing, so I just wanted to see what the best possible product can actually do against the uh, known pastes against, uh, I mean, from other manufacturers. So uh, I will at least compare the TFX, TFX against the Kimping Cooling KPX. If the uh, results look all right, I might just add the uh, Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Liquid Helium Edition to the comparison table as well. So yeah, the... Uh, Minus part about these new thermal pastes, at least for the uh, TFX, is that, is that the availability is still very, very bad and the price is usually uh, very high. So uh, I could not find the TFX in Finland at all, which was not that surprising to be honest. So uh, it was available in uh, quite many places in Europe, but the price is really, really expensive for, for any thermal paste. So the uh, TFX comes in... Uh, two different tube sizes, in 2 gram size tube and a 6.2 gram size tube, which this one over here is. The uh, 2 gram size tube uh, starts at around like a, a bit under 13 euros plus the uh, shipping on top. So that means uh, the starting price per gram for the TFX or for the 2 gram size tube is uh, uh, six and a half euros, so that is really really high for any thermal paste. It is definitely the highest I've seen pretty much Then the uh, 6.2 gram size tube starts in a starts in around like 30 euros and even above plus shipping so the uh, Price per gram Starts at around a bit under five euros on the higher size tube or on the larger size tube So it is still very very expensive like compared to um, KPX for it for example or even just normal thermal gris grizzly cryonaut, they are much cheaper per gram. But still, even when it's expensive, I really wanted to give it a try, because if it's good, then uh, it still has some good value. The uh, And also what I've experienced with thermal pastes recently, for my use, it is not just about the actual uh, like temperature performance on uh, air or water. Uh, I have really had some serious issues with thermal paste cracking recently uh, with graphics cards on LM2. So if the uh, 
Temperature results of the TFX look promising on water cooling. I will definitely try the TFX uh, with uh, some graphics card on LN2 like 2080 Ti Kimpin or the 7970 Lightning. Because even if TFX performs better, or if it performed a little bit, I mean, if, it, if the TFX performed a little bit worse on water, if it can manage the uh, uh, cracking issue a bit better than a KPX or Cryonaut, it is still an amazing product for my kind of user. So I want to test that out as well. So we will see about that. But anyways, and uh, see, since that my uh, temperature result differences were so small last time, I thought about making the comparison uh, on the uh, deleted 1900K this time, because the uh, temperature differences should be higher when you compare the different thermal pastes on top of the actual, I mean, on top of the uh, actual uh, die of a CPU. So uh, I will just use uh, direct die cooling because there I will only have one layer of thermal paste. So uh, it should make the overall comparison a bit more reliable when uh, you just uh, change the, uh, you just change one layer of thermal paste at a time. So, uh, the results, the result differences should be a bit higher than when compared on top of the IHS. So uh, it will be interesting to see how these perform. So uh, we will see about that, but let's test the TFX first and then we can wrap all of the results in a conclusion. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. So next step is obviously the uh, thermal based application. I will be trying uh, to apply the thermal paste quite the same way as on LN2, so just a quite large amount of paste on the middle of the die, at the middle of the die, just like that. Of course, you, you can say that it's a bit too much, but it doesn't matter because all the excess will be pushed away to the sides by the uh, pressure of the cooler, cooler, so it doesn't matter at all when it comes to the uh, thermal performance. So right now I'm in the OS with the uh, 5.2 gigahertz daily profile almost, so uh, it's running at 5.2 GHz on the core, 4.8 on the cache, 4200, 17, 18, 18, 28 common rate, two timings on the memory, and uh, this is with uh, minus 50% small read group option, so uh, I will use this this uh, setting combination for the bo uh, for the both thermal paste, so for the TFX as well as for the Kimbin cooling, so I will do the testing by running uh, Pro 95 26.6 again, so it's the 26.6 version in uh, small FFT mode, so that we can really see the uh, temperatures. The ambient I'm measuring with the K type again. Yes, I know that. Uh, that I mean, you would get better end result by measuring the actual uh, uh, loop temperature, but. Uh, or the temperature of the water inside the loop, but this, this should do the trick anyways. So uh, I will just let it run. So right now the cores are already going from uh, 64 all the way up to 76. So there is some variation there. I'm not fully sure why the second core is running so much cooler than the others. But yeah, I will just test like this for a short period of time and uh, then I will just compare the two results against each other. And now the same thing with the Kimping Cooling KPX. And then, and then last but not least is the uh, Cryonaut uh, Liquid Helium Edition. So just out of pure interest, I want to test this one, this one as well. So I will apply it the same way as the TFX. So a fairly large line at the center of the die, and I will just use the uh, cooler to spread the thermal paste. All right, so it went pretty much as I expected from the start. So uh, when just looking at the uh, temperature results, the average of the core maximums for the uh, thermal right TFX ended up being 74.125 degrees Celsius after around 10 to 15 minutes in Prime 95 26.6 with the settings I showed. And uh, when comparing that to the ambient room temperature, the uh, delta temperature result was 51.525 degrees Celsius. So it's 
quite close to the uh, end results of my uh, previous uh, high-end thermal paste comparison video because they are used pretty much the same settings for the CPU. But now we have uh, yeah we have conventional thermal paste on top of the die, but we only have one layer of thermal interface material. So even if we don't have a soldered IHS, we have the water block directly on top of the die. So uh, it's funny to see that you pretty much don't lose. Uh, well, you at least don't lose in uh, temperatures when you are running a conventional thermal paste uh, uh, rather than soldered I IHS when you are running direct die. But anyways, and when I moved on to the Kimping cooling KPX, uh, there the average of the core maximums was only 70. 25 degrees Celsius and uh, compared to the room temperature just uh, 47.45 degrees Celsius so that is around 4 degrees better than the thermal right TFX so that is quite a clear difference already and uh, when I added the uh, thermal grizzly cryonaut liquid helium addition to the table as well that one got 71.125 degrees Celsius as average of the core maximums and 48.425 uh, when compared to the room temperature. So uh, I actually ran the thermal right TFX twice to uh, double check that I'm getting uh, correct results and the uh, temperature performance was uh, pretty much identical on both runs. I tried uh, with two different ways to apply the thermal base as well. First I tried with uh, with that uh, just line on the middle of the die and on second attempt I actually uh, uh, used the uh, included applicator to spread the thermal paste and the temperature result was pretty much the same on both uh, attempts. The ambient temperature didn't really uh, vary that much during the whole uh, uh, testing session so uh, the ambient temperature stayed between 22.5 uh, and 20 de 23 degrees Celsius so uh, so uh, I could quite clearly confirm that KPX and Cryonaut Liquid Helium Edition are better straight from the get-go compared to TFX. I could see uh, visibly lower temperatures with the KPX and Cryonaut when I, I mean, during the first three seconds of Prime 9526.6, the initial temperatures were clearly a few degrees lower compared to the TFX when I... Uh, uh, when I when I started the test, so uh, like at the end of the testing, uh, I mean at the end of the TFX run, the hottest core was uh, 79 degrees for the TF I mean for the TFX, and the uh, hottest core for KPX or Cryonaut did not exceed 75 degrees Celsius. So uh, that is already quite a clear difference. So uh, you can draw a quite good conclusion line that. Both the KPX and Cryonaut liquid helium edition are better than the TFX. The uh, temperature difference is large enough, but it's very hard to uh, draw a clear conclusion between the KPX and Cryonaut because they are very close to each other. So they they are pretty much within the margin of error. But uh, the I will I still want to try the TFX uh, with uh, some graphics card on LN2 because when I looked at the uh, paste spread after the, uh, unmounting the cooler, it's quite dry. I mean, the TFX is very dry compared to some other thermal pastes on the market. So the uh, uh, thermal paste is really, I mean, the TFX is really, really dry. So I, I want to give it a go with, for example, the 7970, which I ran recently, or the 2080 Ti Kimpin, uh, just to see if it, ca if it has any better chance on surviving the very annoying thermal paste cracking compared to a KPX, Cryonaut or Chilid Extreme. Because if it survived the thermal paste cracking, like let's say it could pull, uh, it could go to full pot with 2080 Ti Kimpin and 770 Lightning, then the TFX would definitely rock uh, for my purpose. Because uh, it doesn't really matter if it's 2 to uh, 4 degrees worse in uh, temperature performance, if it can run the uh, cards without issues on LN2. So there, the uh, ability to run uh, colder temperatures surpasses that 
uh, lower temperature performance. So uh, I will give it a go and I will see what happens. But yeah, so if it did better on LN2 tracking wise, then I will definitely keep the thermal paste. But uh, like what I would like uh, recommend for a normal user, the uh, price and availability of the TFX is a bit too high for any standard user out there. Uh, when looking at the middle option from thermal right, like the TF8, that is much better in uh, uh, like in uh, price wise. The highest or the largest tube is 12.8 grams, and it costs the same as the 6.2 gram size tube of TFX. But yet again, you can still get better stuff like the KPX or Cryonaut for the same price of TF8 or slightly even cheaper sometimes. So uh, it's really hard to uh, like uh, fully recommend the TF8 or TFX over these two thermal pastes over here. But it was, but anyways, this was a very funny and interesting experiment to test these thermal pastes. And I really think that this method of testing the thermal pastes thermal pastes is better. So when you compare them between the uh, uh, between the dye and the water block, so uh, uh, this time the this time there were larger differences between the uh, different thermal paste, so it's, it looks quite interesting. So uh, I will also test the uh, Thermalrite Silver King liquid metal thermal interface material against the uh, uh, Thermal Grizzly uh, conductor out. I will see what happens. This, al this also has very high uh, thermal conductivity rating on the package, but I would expect that the uh, uh, outcome will be pretty much the same as what happened here right now. But I will still I will still test it for sure, just out of uh, interest. But yeah, so that's pretty much it. So uh, in my testing, the uh, KPX still remains the uh, uh, king of the hill conventional thermal paste on the market. Of course, the uh, uh, improved version of Cryonaut is uh, really good as well, and. Uh, the guys over at Thermal Grizzly have really nice deal for uh, extreme overclockers from HW Bot, uh, price-wise for the large 37 gram tube. So uh, uh, big thanks to the uh, big thanks to uh, Thermal Grizzly boys and Debauer for this uh, deal still. But yeah, so that's the end pretty much. So if you have any uh, comments about this testing or questions, please drop them down below once again. And like and share this video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you on the next one.